Hi, this is on Imagination of the Healing Garden. Welcome to Pando. We're going to be taking a look in the first ethic, courage. The first ethic is a unique one because there's a lot of preliminary that must be set first. And this is where all the other ethics are going to be very different because there is no preliminary or preparations required. As soon as you complete the first ethic, you're on your way. You are already prepared for the next ethic. This presents a problem for a lot of people with the first ethic. Because if you are not making the proper preparations, you are not going to begin the chain reaction. This is the chain reaction of life. I'm going to say that one again. This is the chain reaction of life. You're supposed to be knocking over the domino. And this propels you forward naturally via Mother Nature. The problem is around one, two, three years old, our parents interfere with this process in early childhood and they derail the chain reaction. So the chain reaction never happens. You have two types of people in the world. You have people who never get their life launched and they go about their whole life not knowing who they are. Many of them will sit down and refuse to live until they have guarantee of success or the ethical path and they end up spending a life unlived. These are people who never had the proper preparations to begin the chain reaction. They are the ones who never set off the chain reaction. The other kind of people are the people who succeeded in setting off the chain reaction. And they are somewhere along the chain reaction and they stalled out or they're working their way through it. So either you are in the chain reaction or you never set it off. And which one of these two people you are is going to determine everything about your personality, mental health, and ethics. Everything. 100% of everything in your life is going to be determined by whether or not you did or did not get your chain reaction started. So this is where the first, first ethic really, really, I want to hone in on the preparations. If we do not take great care to focus on the, rec the requirements of the preparations, the chain reaction will never set off. A lot of people go to therapy and they try and force the chain reaction to happen and the chain reaction never happens. I'm going to say that one again. A lot of people who lack motivation and just can't get excited about life have failed to prepare for the chain reaction it's, it's literally setting up the dominoes in your line. They have not set up the dominoes. And as a result, they're in therapy trying to knock down the dominoes and ca cause a chain reaction, but they never set up the dominoes. So this is all about setting up your dominoes. Now, a big distraction of domino preparation sets is self-care. That's going to blow the mind of a lot of people, but bear with me. Self-care is absolutely not productive when it's not done with actual comprehension. Self-care is supposed to ground you and energize you. If it is not grounding you and energizing you, you're wasting your time. It's doing nothing. It's a Band-Aid. A Band-Aid self-care is easily the biggest problem in our culture right now. I have seen so many Band-Aids that do nothing. I have seen people literally with 10 self-care items that they do, and none of them energizes them. None of them grounds them. They are still unhappy. They're still not going through life. They still haven't made the preparations. So getting people from where they are into their actual preparation first perspective room to set things up properly is vital to this working. Self-care is a distraction in many cases. You are not supposed to be doing self-care if you're not even living. Your self-care is supposed to be grounding you in yourself, reminding you of who you are, and it is supposed to be energizing you. This is physics. 
So we're going to walk you through what you should be doing to provide you with grounding energy so you know who you are and energizing you. Play. Play. Desire. Love. And want. Play. Desire. Love and want. That is exactly what you are going to need to ground yourself and to energize yourself. Play, desire, what you love and what you want. It is best if you have a dream, imagination, creativity, art. These are phenomenal to nourish the imagination. Your imagination is absolutely what's going to help you with this. Play, desire, love and want. You must do what you love. You must do what you desire and you must do what you want. And you really should be playing with those things. Now, a lot of people struggle with this part because they have been away from the concept of play for so long or they lack imagination or they don't know what they want. These are symptoms of people who are so mentally derelict in self-care, in grounding and energizing, that they are literally at the stage of birth and infancy. So we're going to take you prior to that point to what you need to know. You want to know your qualities. Your qualities are the ones you want to have. You're going to use the word wish. Who do you wish you could be? What do you wish you would do? I have yet to meet somebody who did not have this. I have yet to find one single person who doesn't even have this. So until I find that person, I'm not going to discuss anything prior to that. We're going to start with who do you want to be? Who do you wish you could be? What do you look at for qualities in another person where you say, I wish I could? Or flip it. What do you wish you didn't do? Now go with the opposite of that. If you wish you didn't do something, there is the there is the beginning. You want to wish for what you did do. So focus on what you don't want and then give name to the opposite. Talk about what you do want as far as qualities go. Qualities is where all of this begins. 100%, this is the starting line. If you have no idea, if you don't know who you are, if you have no idea what you are, it begins with the qualities you wish you had. Now, this exercise is one that you will be using for the rest of your life, no matter how great and healthy you are. It is one I use for me. It is this gorgeous triangle where it is your qualities. I wish I was this. And then it's practicing those qualities. It is using your subconscious mind's RAS. We're going to be talking to you about how you can do this, where you deliberately look for how you do those qualities. Are you practicing those qualities? Are you using those qualities? Look for ways you practice them. So let's say you wish you were more productive. It's really imperative to look at what qualities or what characteristics it takes to be productive. Is it time management? then you need to practice time management skills. Now, whenever you catch yourself and you're going to enter into a stage where you catch yourself doing this. So as you catch yourself, then write it down, journal it. Keep track of how often you catch yourself. You are literally practicing the skill at this point. This is skill building. So that is stage two. So first you have to set the intention, that is stage one, by defining it. So stage one is setting the attention intention and defining it. What qualities do you wish you had? If you wish you were more kind, then be kind. Do you wish you were more social? Then practice being social. Now, a lot of people who struggle with that first ethical perspective have a block right here. It is between the, I have the intention and I have the practice skill. It is an aversion to discomfort. This is very, very common. This is actually their struggle and their weakness. It is a problem with being discomfort or having discomfort. It is a severe panic or fear. Now, all of these emotions 
all of these negative emotions that come up. I'm going to hate to use the word negative here, but these emotions are actually a symptom of emotional regulation, which means you have not learned how to do emotional regulation. So you're going to need a plan. You're going to need a strategy about those things. And that's one of the tools we give you for this. So this is going to be a segue. We're going to call that 1B. So one is set the intention. You might have to manage 1B, which is the emotional regulation. And the next one is going to be practicing the skill. So the next thing is the more you practice the skill, the more you become it. It is imperative that you absolutely not bully yourself through this. Do not push. This is the biggest mistake people in the first perspective make is they actually become a bully to the self. Do not bully the self. When you self-bully, take in that word, self-bully. When you self-bully, you teach your subconscious mind that it's under attack. And all the self-preservation and fear that you have due to emotional regulation heightens. So what people in the first perspective often struggle with is this cycle. It's a catch-22. It's a, it's a logic loop where you go to do, you have self-regulation problems, and then you self-bully. So your defenses go up. You try again. So you self-regulate or fail to self-regulate. And then you self-bully, which heightens the defenses. And then it just cycles. And that is the addiction cycle. That is one logic loop of your addiction cycle of the addiction cycle. The next logic loop of the addiction cycle, there's three logic loops. The next logic loop of the addiction cycle is the aversion to discomfort. It's the, when you feel the discomfort, you actually feel a lack of control. 100% of all addiction is a lack of control. It is addicted to control, addicted to power. That is all it is every single time. You are seeking out control or power. It doesn't matter what you are addicted to. That's not relevant. That is absolutely a red herring. What you are really addicted to is feeling control. And it's not so much an addicted addiction as it's more of a logic loop and a fail safe. That's really what it is. Addiction is actually a logic loop plus a fail safe. It's highly logical. So once you understand how logic works, which is what we're going to cover with you and how to get around it, it'll break it. So what you're really doing is you have a trigger point where you're feeling anxiety. It's, it's an emotional trigger where the subconscious mind tells you, oh, you are now out of control. And immediately you will go into self-preservation mode, which is exactly what your subconscious mind should be doing, but it's got the wrong program. So it will immediately seek out self-preservation. The self-preservation is usually, and this is where you plug in whatever substance, and it's also self-harming which then turns around and communicates to your mind, oh, we have a fix and also we have what we need. Oh, but also that self-harming and now let's increase the symptom. So you're now again conditioning the subconscious mind that there is danger and it's under attack. So it fortifies and it builds up another army. It keeps building on this army to protect itself from the very thing that's fixing the problem, even though it's not fixing the problem. So what you are going to have to do with the logic loop and the fail safe is you have to retrain your mind. This is again, back to emotional regulation. You're going to have to retrain your mind that the discomfort is not a bad thing. So really what you need to be doing, if you do struggle with addiction, what you really need to be doing is teaching yourself that discomfort is okay in small doses. Discomfort is okay. And you're going to want to build up tolerance to small doses of discomfort. Now, this is where there's a lot of other outside problems. So we're going to set all of this aside over here, and we're going to take a step back. People who struggle with addiction almost always have a third party who interferes. And that third party is the one who will either scold them, punish them, baby them, enable them. This is the problem. Because this, from that third party outside source, communicates, oh, I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be abandoned. I'm going to be abused. I'm going to be. And now the, this is the third logic loop. Now the addictive mind is sitting here going, if I do X, 
protect myself, then I will be punished. Welcome to addiction. That is the logic loop. If I protect myself, then I will be punished. What the addictive individual, what that person is really dealing with is their self-preservation system is compromised and their self-preservation system is attacking them while their self-preservation is protecting them while their self-preservation is something that they can't have. That's what's going on. So in order to do this, the first thing is you're going to need the education, which is exactly what this video is all about. It's absolutely about all of this, where we break it down and we show you these three logic loops. It is the relationship you have with self-preservation. It is the relationship you have with discomfort. It is the relationship you have with your own self-bully. So that is really what you are dealing with. Self-bully, discomfort, and self-preservation. So I know how to break the if-then clauses of each and every one of these. We're going to give those to you. And I'm going to be showing you how to segue out of each every one of these logic loops to fix the logic loop that you're in to restore it to the spiral. A logic loop is when the spiral turns into a circle. That is what a logic loop is. That's what a catch-22 is. It's when the spiral breaks and it becomes an infinite circle. In the case of the addiction problem, it's the, the logic loop becomes an infinity circle eight. So you end up with three logic loops literally stacked on top of each other. So we're gonna be covering self-preservation. We're going to be covering your relationship with discomfort. And we're going to be covering your relationship with the self-bully. Once, and this is this is the real, this is the big picture of all of this. So we're gonna take one more zoom out so we're going to set that aside and we're going to zoom out once more back and looking at the big picture. Urgency and time is the problem. There is no urgency or time. The urgency and the time puts unnecessary strain and stress on you, especially from third party outside sources saying, you got to do this. You got to do this. This is why pressure might be a real big problem for you. Urgency, pressure, and what you are really dealing with is that self-bully, that discomfort, and that self-preservation. And that's going to take time, a lot of time, and that's okay. Because what you are doing is you are nursing your subconscious mind back to health. That is what you are doing. Which means any job you have is going to have to get put on hold. Any third-party demands, they're going to have to shut up and go away. Because what you really need to do is nurse your subconscious mind back to health with a focus on your relationship to discomfort, self-bullying, and self-preservation. The self-bullying stops when you allow yourself all the time you need to address the real problem. Any obligations you have, and this is vital, any obligations you have need to not be prioritized anymore. Your priority should only be nursing your subconscious mind back to health. By changing your priority, the self-bullying will stop and you have broken the first logic loop. It starts with shifting your priority. It is shifting your expectations of yourself. In order to do that, you have to know what you are really dealing with you're not dealing with an addiction. What you are really dealing with is three logic loops stacked on top of each other with self-bullying, discomfort, and self-preservation. You have a logic loop confused self-preservation because of your bully, self-bully, self-preservation cycle going on. And that is causing a bigger problem with that discomfort. So you're going to have to start with that prioritizing expectations. Urgency must go away. There is no timeline here that has got to stop. Understanding expectations and what you're really dealing with. This is literally your relationship with reality, what you are really dealing with. The whole thing is a delusion in a delusion in a delusion. Delusions that 
are hidden by abusers, by your environment, by all of the noise on the outside, because you don't know what's going on on the inside. And once you change your expectations and your reality, the delusions fall down. And as the delusions fall down, you can go, oh, this is what I'm really dealing with. So the first priority is going to be getting rid of all urgency and pressure and allowing yourself a realistic time frame to address the actual problem. Two, prioritizing, making sure that your priority is nursing the subconscious mind, not going to work, not doing any scheduling that you may have to do, not appeasing people. Your only priority needs to be nursing the subconscious mind. So your priority, your entire mindset is going to have to shift from this is what I've got to do to this is what I've got to do. Once you do that, we walk you through the process and then, then you can start choosing what qualities you want for yourself. Then you can start learning emotional regulation. Then you can start doing the practice of the skills you want to have slowly because you are also going to be reteaching your subconscious mind. Then you get to become now you're ready to set up your domino effect for your chain reaction. Once you get to that part, to that skill building set where you finally have the qualities you want, now it's a matter of, okay, now you're going to practice those qualities. Now we get to talk back about what it is you want, what it is you desire, what it is you love to do, what it is you want to do. And that's where we start make-believing, we start imagining, we start dreaming again. Play and make-believe are a huge part of this process, which is why children play. And then when we set all of that up, you're going to get to a point where you're going to get excited, curious. You're going to get restless. That's supposed to happen. Now you are in the stages you need to be in to start knocking over that chain reaction. You're going to get to that point where you feel bored and restless. Boredom is actually a restlessness feeling of, I've got all this energy. What do I do with it? You go out the door and you have an adventure. And that's where you feel the emotion, apprehension, not fear, apprehension. When you feel apprehension, it's that moment where you're standing, Bilbo, on your threshold, and you just got to take one step out of that door. And then you're on an adventure. And it's literally that moment where you're standing there and you're going, what do I do? <laughs> and it's your courage now versus your apprehension. And here's the thing is when you're standing there with that apprehension, you have that excitement build up and you're like, I want to go. I want to go do something. I want to I want to have an adventure. And you can feel it. And as you approach the door, you feel vulnerable. That is the feeling of wide open spaces and being open to receive. Now that is something that people are nervous about. And with the right emotional regulation, which we're going to prepare you for that, you'll be able to walk out the door without a problem. If you have a problem with courage, it's because you are not self-regulating. It's because you have not learned how to emotionally regulate. And it's because you have not done any of the prerequisition work. And that's what we're going to cover here with you on this first ethic. The first ethic in courage is absolutely the most, it requires the most work because it's literally setting up the, the machine and getting the physics prepared so that the chain reaction can begin. Once your everything is balanced with energy, with the right preparations, you now are in that position where it's courage versus apprehension. And there's gonna be that moment where finally it tips, the kinetic energy transfers over and you are going to step out the door. Congratulations, you've now entered the second ethical perspective, self-authority. So we're going to stop it here. And this first course, Courage, is going to cover literally everything I just went over with you. And we're going to break it down into basic steps and walkthroughs. I'm going to really strongly impart this information onto you. Do not skip steps. In mathematics, order of operations is vital. To skip a step is literally equivalent 
to skipping the resources, you are going to need your ethical resources to prepare you for the next stage. So to skip a step in the learning journey of the discovered self is literally to put yourself in a position where you are not going to have the tools to succeed. And that is going to increase your rate of difficulty. People have hard lives because they lack the ethics and everything you get from ethical resources. So thank you so much. Make sure you do these in order. Do not skip anything. Overwhelm, discomfort, these are all going to be addressed in emotional regulation and management. The feeling of anxiety, all going to be managed and discussed in emotional regulation. So we are going to walk you through everything you need for these steps. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.